Hello and welcome to Clea's World. I am Clea and today I would like to share with you more of the information I've received from the 25th dimension during my last EQA hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript of the session and when I refer to Lorraine, I'm speaking to my practitioner who's asking me the questions I've prepared for the session. And when I refer to me, I'm speaking to myself under hypnosis, which means the answers are coming from a 25th. In this particular video, I'll be speaking of another dream that I had and that I asked the 25th about. You will see some similarities on the surface with the dream we discussed in the previous video. However, there are more nuances that I want to share with you. And so I wanted to bring this to your attention. As always, before I start reading, I'd like to thank you for subscribing, liking, and commenting on this video. You know, it makes me so happy and uh, I, I love interacting with you. All right, I'm going to start reading here. And this is Lorraine reading my dream in the first person. So the way that I wrote it. Okay, next dream from February 11th, 2023. I had another dream where two people were leaving. One was Nick, and I call him Nick uh, in my book. This was a man that I knew after I had left my ex-husband. And so he was not uh, the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. He was part of my dark night of the soul and realizing how, what I was doing, basically and what I was putting up with. So again, one of the people leaving was Nick. So I didn't really care about the fact that he was leaving. And the other was this scrawny short guy in his 20s. I seemed to like him as a person. I was not devastated that he was leaving, but I was not neutral like I was with Nick. It's like when a likable acquaintance moves, it doesn't really affect you, even if you like the person, but you're not completely indifferent. So I hugged him and told him that I don't believe in goodbyes and that I would go visit him and we'd see each other again. They had each left a house, so I wanted to buy both. But I decided that I had to choose since my resources were limited and I would buy one of the two places to rent out since it was really inexpensive, like $15,000. I woke up and when I fell asleep again, I dreamed that I was staying in the house that belonged to Nick's mom and she was out working. I wanted to do something nice for the people who had left and Nick's mom. So I wrote a lot of cards to give out to everyone to send to them. I prepared some small live animals dressed in different colors who looked like miniature cats, as small as my hand. And each card was supposed to be sent with a small animal as gift. And I know this is crazy, guys. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> One of them was trying to run away. So I started playing with him and then my mother came. And I know she'd take care of it since I was feeling unsure that the mini cats would be okay. This dream makes it look like I will still be here for some time after this friend of mine's departure. Also, just like in the first dream about this, which again was in the previous video, I was not in pain from this person leaving, even though I liked hanging out with him. Why is this? Is it because I can still pretend that people are here? End of dream. Me. Yeah, so we'll answer the last part of the last question, basically, which is no. Claire is thinking that the reason she in the dream was okay is because she can still pretend. No, it's because, again, she's having these dreams now where she sees at higher self level how she's maneuvering, how things are happening. You know, she was maneuvering in the previous dream where she was telling her friend very calmly, no, you better leave today. Even though she would have loved to have more time with her, she has moved beyond the emotions. Again, she's not integrating. In these dreams, she's not integrating. So she's not seeing the emotions that she's had that she didn't want to recognize at 3D level. Like, for example, we said how frustrated we felt as a team of the light because of the indifference of the people around us and so on and so forth. The way that they have not responded to our cries for help or for support or whatever it is. So that's when we're showing her how she really felt, the frustration, the resentment, the anger, et cetera, et cetera. In these dreams, all she's seeing is, you must say from a 20,000 foot view, how things are transpiring, have transpired and are transpiring. So there is no emotional attachment. It's just what it is. And again, Clea understands that she's also had the ability to change some of these things because we do create our reality. And she was the one saying, no, go, it's okay. So that's what it means by she's very much in charge of our emotions. Because again, at the higher self level, this is a game. We're just moving pawns, you know, our NPC bodies to make certain things happen. And we're maneuvering our reality so that it shows up a certain way. So in this dream, specifically, we have Nick leaving. And again, he has left a while ago and Clea couldn't care less. <laughs> and they were laughing because, of course, I, you know, I bypassed that attachment that I had to him in 3D. 
Nick was the person who in the book was very low vibration and a narcissist as she described him. And so he wanted to show up, of course, he's a master like the rest of us. But he has left a while ago and he's actually gone back to the 25th dimension because he has chosen a very challenging experience in this lifetime and he disappointed himself. He felt disappointed about how he played in this particular last lifetime, which is unfortunate in the sense that he didn't need to feel that way. He could have gone on to enjoy the game. But again, going home, coming back to the 25th is no punishment. It is a choice and he's welcome and he's free to go back into the matrix at any time. So it doesn't really matter in the great scheme of things. So he is fine. Obviously, the second he moved to the 25th, everything became obvious to him and clear to him in an instant. So he's very happy, obviously, as happy as we are in the 25th, which again, we're very aware of our eternal nature. So sometimes it gets boring <laughs> and they were laughing. But at least we don't go through the ups and downs that he has experienced in this incarnation. And so therefore, he's happy with his choice right now. And I am happy to hear that, of course. I don't wish him or I never wish him anything bad. And as far as the scrawny guy, the other guy, yes, he was her friend, basically my girlfriend from the previous stream that I discussed in the previous video. And we already said she's already left. And Claire, of course, in the dream is telling this guy, yeah, I'll come visit you, no problem. And the reason she was okay with him leaving and not torn apart, not desperate, even though she wasn't indifferent to him leaving because again, she liked him. It's really because we know we're going to be okay. We know we're going to see these people again. It is not the end of the world. We understand and we fully accept the fact that in 3D, when somebody leaves, say that this was a physical departure, so what you consider to be a death, it would be tragic because loss is very real to us on this planet. We like to believe that it is real and it's the worst thing that can happen. But truly in these dreams, at the higher self level, which is what we're showing, yes, we do like other essences. There are essences that we feel very keen to. Of course, we are all one. And that we want to spend more time with. And again, not just from this lifetime, once the veil falls, we're going to remember lots of instances like this. Lots of people we've loved at 3D level and so on and so forth. But the truth is, we know that they are there. Nothing's happened to them. So in this case, for example, her friend is going to be available to meet with Clea once we move past the takedown. So she's saying, see you later. She's saying, this is not goodbye. We'll see you again. And that's exactly what's going to happen. In fact, in the dream, he was okay too as he was leaving. He wasn't desperately clinging to Claire saying, I don't want to go. In fact, it was his choice to leave. Claire certainly could not tell him what to do. She simply told him, hey, you might want to leave. In the previous room, she said, you might want to leave today since you're going to leave tomorrow anyway. You might want to leave today to avoid all of this. And in this dream, again, he's the one saying, okay, I'm going to leave. And she says, okay, well, I'm sorry to see you go, but I'm happy for you. I'll see you again. So that's what's happening. Now for the houses, yes, she's going to continue doing what she was doing before. Basically what that means is keep the shell in place. So the shell is going to continue as long as we are here. We already said, and I don't know if you guys know that I am in real estate. So that's uh, dealing with houses is very much a part of my routine or my 3D reality. We already said this. We do not want the shell to collapse. And so she's going to go through the motions of buying a rental, for example. She's not even based on the timeline. And we don't want to say timeline as in there is a deadline, as in on this particular day, you guys are leaving. That's not how it works. We've said it many times. This particular project doesn't have a timeline. It's not like the takedown. We want to make this distinction. When we, and we've explained this before, when we said the timeline, when it came to the takedown, when we were telling you, okay, by July, you're going to be done, it was based on 300 years worth of work when we're doing logistics. And we do mean it in the sense of we we're approaching planets to say, hey, you want to take in this number of people? Hey, you got to build these chambers. Hey, we need to figure out strategically how this is going to work because of this and that. You got to pick up with the ship. How many ships do we need? How long is this going to take? So it was very much logistics. And in that sense, we said, okay, you're going to be done based on the pace of work you've been keeping. You're going to be done in July. In fact, you've expedited things because we're going to be done much later. When we refer to this and specifically discuss this project, this project is not about logistics. This is not, we already said, the recall is not about logistics. We could have had it months ago. This project is all about us becoming consciously aware of what we are doing what we do, who we are. And this has everything to do with emotion. So we can't say to you, Lorraine, it's going to take you four days to absorb this emotion. We have no way of knowing. 
Maybe you're extremely emotional. It only takes you two months. So what? So now what happens? Nothing happens. It took you two months instead of four days. And that's what we're talking about. That's why we say, you believe that you're going to be done with this project in April. And, and just so you know, guys, this session was from February 15th. So, uh, and I'm recording today is April 4th. So the recall has not happened yet. So let's see, by the time this comes out, we should be in uh, at the end of May, then hopefully we'll have better news about that. Again, it's up to us. So I'm going to keep reading. So April is what you thought from the beginning would be your time frame for being done. Does it mean it's going to be the beginning of April, end of April or whatever? We don't know. You tell us or we tell ourselves and <laughs> you are laughing. Really, it's a better way of saying it. And so in that sense, it's different. And because of that, until we are here, we are going to continue going through the motions. So it depends on how long this takes. If we are on par with what we think is going to take, meaning that we are going through the motions. Claire knows for sure that she's integrating faster and faster in more things. She's actually seeing things being put away. She sees it in her dreams that things don't come up anymore. And we're moving into the next phase and the next phase. And so based on this, she knows, and we're telling you she's not the only one. You guys, many of you realize how much you have evolved and how quickly you are evolving going through the motions, you're going to get to a point where you're like, okay, there's no point in being here anymore. I cannot move forward here because the energy is still what it was. It's still dense. I got to go to keep doing this kind of work on the earth. And so once that happens, obviously, as you move on, there's not going to be a shell anymore. And that's based on what you think is going to happen in the next couple of months. And again, the session was for February. So a couple of months will be around this time frame, April. But again, we don't want you to now hang your hat on that because we don't want you, we never wanted you to be focused on a timeline because we have said a million times, there is no time. We want you to focus what you are on what you are doing. And this is why you are excited because you are doing what you plan to do and you are finishing. It's like a big project that you had at work and all of a sudden you're saying, wow, I'm almost done with that. It's fantastic. <laughs> all right. I'm glad we're, we're doing well. Lorraine, thank you. So did the little miniature cats have any significance? <laughs> Me. That part is similar to the previous dream where she had a part where she was seeing some of the shell and how we have done things here and the life review about what's happened here. In this particular case, she was doing what she does in real life, which is, oh, we want to do something nice for these people because they are leaving, et cetera, et cetera. We want to bring everybody in. We're saying goodbye. But it didn't have a specific meaning per se. It was more about the fact that we are going to keep the shell in place. So now we're writing cards. You know, we're continuing in our life here. Are we really continuing in our life? Yes and no. We can say yes, because we're still here. But really, we're not doing anything new that we weren't doing before. It's just that there are less and less of us. And so now we're writing cards because we're keeping in touch. And many of us, not just Claire, that's why she was distributing. She was going to distribute these cards with the gifts to everybody. Now, the funny part is that the gifts were very strange gifts. They are live animals and they were laughing. You don't necessarily give live animals as gifts, but it was more the overall picture of this. Now, the live animals, why was that interesting? Because there was one who acted differently. And all of a sudden she's running after this one and Claire's goal, how she sees her function, is always to make sure everything is corralled, everything is in order. So of course she's running. Instead of focusing on the 999, she's focusing on the one that's getting away and then she's going to take care of it, you know? Find it and bring it back into the fold, that kind of thing. Because her role is to make sure everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. Man, do I sound very boring? <laughs> But this is so my personality, my goodness. <laughs> All right. This is a little bit similar to the dream that we previously discussed. It was probably a couple of sessions ago that Carolyn had where she was going house to house to say, is everybody gone? Is there anybody still here? And there isn't. We already said there's nobody here. That's why she had that dream because she couldn't find anybody. She couldn't find any people. And this is similar. It has to do with our job, if you want to call it that. The job of the 12,000. Because we're just talking about organizing, pretty much like a job here. We're talking about organizing and strategizing and getting stuff done. That's all. That's all that this was referring to. There was no particular meaning to the miniature cats, per se. <laughs> they were very cute, though, I have to say. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.